how do I? Hey, Rachel, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. We will get started in a minute or two. Yeah, the girl who's sleeping is the one on the call. <laughs> I got up at 6.30, so I'll get. Yeah, I usually get up early. Homeschooling has not been uh, good for me. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely been a change and, you know, Mike and I have always worked from home, but then now having the kids. Everybody home. Yeah, it's uh, between the band, the internet bandwidth and phone calls and meetings. It's been interesting. Yeah. And getting, getting on or to focus has been interesting. <laughs> yeah. Because at school, I'm sure he has no problem with everybody else doing it. But at home, I'm just like, oh, my gosh, can we I get know. one paper? <laughs> yeah, I'm constantly having to ask, did you do your work? Did, did you tell your teacher you're online? Did you? <laughs> yeah, if I'm not standing over him going through each one, he, he can't stay focused. He, oh, he's like, funny. now. And he's like, I just want to do what I want when I want. I don't want to do this. I'm like, oh Lord, it's six. If that's what he thinks, we're in trouble. <laughs> All righty, so let's get started because I want to, um, when we do these, I want to make sure that we're off by eight just so that everyone can go and continue on with their day. So um, Rachel, I'm not sure if you know, but this is actually streaming live on Facebook on my uh, page. So people can so see that me. people who can't join um, so that they can pop in whenever and um, listen in and pray along when we do. Okay. So do I need to mute myself now? Uh, totally up to you. If you don't have background noise, you're, you know, you're good. It's up to you. Um, so I want to welcome everyone who's joining. This is the first day that we're doing Live Love Live. Um, this is inspired by, for many different reasons. So, uh, for those who don't know, I'm in the process of finishing up a book and getting it published. Um, and the focus of the book is about God's love based on an encounter that I had and a lot of the lessons that I've learned along the way. And during this time in the world right now where we're dealing with COVID and a lot of people are home and uh, it, there's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of people are out of work, life as we know it has changed. Even though it's temporary, it's still a change and it affects us all. So I thought, why not um, do a daily devotional where we can jump on together, have a moment in the word of God first thing in the morning for those who can join us and all focused on the love of God because what I have learned is that the love of God um, wraps everything that Jesus offers. So when we look at um, peace, joy, patience, self-control, abundance, all those things that Jesus promised us and said we would have in this world, they're really all wrapped in love, contained in his love. Even his judgment, um, even, you know, even his hatred of sin um, and evil, it's all wrapped inside of his love. It's because of his love. So um, we're going to be focusing on that this month and really honing in on the love of God. Because when you come to understand how much God loves you as an individual, how much he loves me as an individual, it will bring us to a place where we can fully trust and it leaves us in a place of security, which leads to peace and to joy, no matter what the circumstances look like. So yesterday, um, I gave a little bit of a devotional and it was based on 1 John 4, 16, where it talks about how God is love. When I had my encounter with uh, God in my kitchen, where he wrapped his love around me, I could, you know, we can talk about it as God hugged me, he embraced me and I felt his love. 
But the reality was that in that moment, it wasn't just I was feeling his love. I just knew that he was love himself. Like he was made up his of love. Um, I remember one time I was reading a book that someone wrote about an experience they had. Um, and when they were in heaven, they described it as everything was made up of the fabric of, of love. It was, everything was woven in love. And it, um, it made total sense to me only because of that experience. Love is what makes up everything. It's, you know, when that verse that talks about how we should have love, uh, you know, love and love endures all. Love is eternal. Love will never go away. We need hope in this world and we need peace in this world and we need joy in this world. The reality is that love is something that will go with us well into eternity. And the reason is because he is love. It's who he is. It's what makes, makes up his being. Everything that he does says you know, everything that's related to him is within the context of his love. So that's what we, um, what I shared briefly yesterday. So if you haven't gone to that uh, post, I wrote about it there. Uh, today, what I want to talk about within the context of his love is how he's a good father. And he's better than we think, um, you know, taking the taking what Bill Johnson says, uh, you know, this whole concept of God being a good father, you would think that it's normal and we would never expect anything different. But I can tell you that from growing up um, now, I had a great uh, childhood. Um, I went to a great church, had amazing experiences. I am who I am today because of that but the reality is that the church I grew up in much like many people during that time was a very religious church and the concept of God uh, was really harsh like he was a harsh God you know it was during that uh, you know holiness movement or whatever whatever you call it um, we didn't call it that I went to a Portuguese church so we we just you know you just live holiness and righteousness but it was a lot of, it was very harsh, really based on punishment. And it formed this thought in my mind of God who is seated on the throne and just waiting uh, for me to mess up. And when I do, then he will admonish me and he will punish me. And he will even punish me to purposely to get me back to him. Um, like I've heard people say how, you know, maybe they had an illness or uh, something happened in their life and they come back to God. And the thought is that, oh, that bad thing happened in my life. God caused it so that I could come back to him. Um, and I grew up believing, not, not necessarily believing and thinking that I can't even say that's true but it was there, it was like ingrained in my mind. I didn't purposely think, oh, God punishes me. But because of what I had been taught my whole life and heard and pretty much indoctrinated, that's how I viewed God, you know, like, and it, I realized after that experience and learning about God, how he is a good father, a good father, um, you know, we take our human perspective of things because it's what we know and it's good because we can actually le learn from it and take pieces from it because the reality is that us as humans we are made as the image of god there's a lot of good things in humanity that actually mirror god and the key is really to look at those things and say what can i learn about these good things and how is it that in that I'm created in his image? So, you know, when we look at, at, at a father, you know, if our, I happen to grow up with an amazing father who took care of me. I grew up in a stable household. 
I have the blessing of not living in a, in a broken home, you know, with abuse and all of that. Um, so I have a concept of a father who's actually a good father, you know, takes care of me, protected me, always looked out for my well-being. Well, if he did that, how much more will my heavenly father do that? How much more had he been doing that in my life when I was going through the worst time ever? And um, so think, realizing like, okay, my, my earthly dad is a good one. And even though he wasn't perfect, there were things that I could learn. So my dad would not ever purposely do something to hurt me simply because he wanted me to love him back or simply because he wanted me <clears throat> to obey him. He wouldn't, you know, if I was sick, he would take care of me. He wouldn't just leave me sick so that I would love him more or, or pursue him more or have a better relationship. Whether we had a bad relationship or not, or whether I had annoyed my parents or not, or had been defiant with my parents or had a season where I was not obeying, if I was sick, my parents took care of me. And obviously within their context, they can't heal me unless they prayed for me, but they would, like if they could, they would. And the, when I had that encounter with God where he embraced me and I could feel his fibers of love, I, that sense of fathering was very prevalent in that moment because I had gone through a really hard time and I had actually just spent I would say about a year uh, from that moment before I had spent about a year purposely pushing God away. The year before that, I was good. Like I was getting to know God better. I was part of a great church. I was going through leadership training. God had given me guidance. And I'm going to share all this in my book. And he had given me guidance. And I got really close to him, even during a really dark time. But as the, the, what I was going through, as it was getting more difficult and I started to cope in ways that weren't necessarily honoring God. Um, now I've never been a wild child. So what y'all consider, <laughs> um, real, you know, bad, what I would consider bad, y'all may consider, oh, you know, no big deal, but I, you know, there, I just have always been that way. So I was coping in ways that um, I knew weren't pleasing to God and I could not pray. I couldn't pray. I couldn't worship. Like I stopped going to church and I basically pushed God away and it became an intentional act of pushing God away um, and seeing darkness and seeing all these things. But in that moment, I felt the father tell me that he was with me and he had always been with me. He never left my side. And that's actually what brought me to my knees in, in to weep was that overwhelming sense of, oh my gosh, you've been with me this whole time. And I've been feeling so hopeless when I didn't have to, oh my gosh, like his love just made me feel so secure. So that brings me to um, our verse today, which is 1 John 3, 1. And I'm reading it out of the Passion Translation. And it says, look with wonder at the depth of the Father's marvelous love that he has lavished on us. He has called us and made us his very own beloved children. That's the first part of the verse. The second part is, the reason the world doesn't recognize who we are is that they didn't recognize him. And um, to some people, and that's not uh, the focus of uh, the devotional today, but um, that verse is one that a lot of people don't understand. And we gloss, we tend to gloss over things when we don't understand. I know I do sometimes. But the reason people don't recognize us as the children of God and, you know, people out in the world 
is simply because they don't recognize him. Um, I don't know about you, but I know people, you know, followers of Jesus, Christians, you know, spirit led folk, whatever you want to call them. Um, we kind of know each other, you know, have you ever gone into like a store or gone to a place and you look at someone and you're like, they know God, they know, they know who he is. Um, and it's because we recognize one another because we know him, you know, he, he is part of our lives. So, um, and the world doesn't, they don't recognize us as children of God because of that. I just want to read really quick before I open uh, to see if anyone has anything to add. First uh, John 3, 1, I want to read it in the New American Standard Translation because it's one of my favorites for study purposes. Um, it, it's more of a traditional, what we're all used to hearing. I know the passion is, um, some people aren't used to it yet. It can be a little controversial. So I like to bring in a more traditional uh, verse. Also just to note, um, only because the purpose of this devotional is also to draw people into knowing God better, knowing the Father better, having a relationship, and studying the Word of God is extremely important, um, especially when we're discerning um, what's God and what's not God. Um, and I like to use, uh, I call it NASB, so if you hear NASB, it's a New American Standard uh, Bible. I like it because of all of the translations, I have found it to be one of the most accurate in terms of one word for word um, and two verb tense. So for example, for those of you who are an academic and are like, what are you talking about? Um, when we talk about how we have died with Christ, right? That word died is very important um, because it's a past tense. If we were to say we are dying with Christ, it, there's a whole different meaning in that sentence. So we have died with Christ has a different meaning and connotation than we are dying with Christ. One is, you know, perpetual ongoing and the other one is a past verb tense, which is the accurate way when we actually say say that particular verse. So it's one of the reasons I like NASB. I actually use NASB, I use Passion. I uh, sometimes go into uh, NLT, I use NIV. Um, and then recently I've been looking in uh, both the complete Jewish Bible and the Orthodox Jewish Bible. So I just look because sometimes the words that are being used um, have a different, uh, flavor or give me a, a better dimension. So depending how I receive things, how I work, one word to you uh, may have not as much strength and meaning, but it would to me only because of how, what I know the revelations I received. So it's just good to, to check different translations. So this translation says, see how great a love the father has bestowed on us that we would be called children of God and such we are. So today's focus and what I want you to meditate on today and to really uh, allow this concept to shower over you and to wash you um, as the rivers of living water flow through you is that God is a good father, but not only that, that he's your good father and that you are his child. It is a, a, a relationship that takes the both of you. It takes me and God. I cannot be his child if he is not my father, and he cannot be my father if I am not his child. It works both ways. We are connected with God, and he is a good father, but he is my good father. And he is a good father, but he is your good father. So today, throughout the day, um, as you have moments, I want you to think, God is my good father. He is my good father. It doesn't exempt him from being the father to someone else, but it just makes it personal where you're having a relationship with him. So I'll um, open it up now. I don't know if Rachel or Lene have anything that they want to add or any experiences you want to share that would help 
bring this more alive to anyone watching. I don't know if it's relevant, but I just met a lady recently um, and she was very knowledgeable in the Lord. I mean, I just met her. We, my, her husband met my husband, invited us to their house, but um, she, the way she spoke to me made me feel like she was like God's only child. Do you know what I mean? Like she kept validating my relationship with him, but that it was nothing like hers. Do you know what I'm kind of saying? Yeah. I kind of, I, and I, I just, I walked away from it and I know that she has an amazing relationship with the Lord just based on what she shared with me, but I walked away from that. And I felt like the Lord wanted me to realize that when I am sharing about my relationship with the Lord, I don't want to exclude others relationship. Yeah. I don't want to make people feel like she kept saying, well, you do hear from the Lord, but what you're hearing is not exactly what he would be saying. Do you know what I'm saying? It made me feel like she was like the teacher's pet and, or like she was his, his favorite. And I just walked away from that thinking, you know, I, when I share about my love with the Lord or how good he is to me or the things that he shares with me, the secrets, it's almost like she was the only one who gets the secrets. And I just, I just thought you don't ever want to, I don't want to make people feel that way, that they're excluded. Um, so I like this devotion because it, it, it does just bring it back. I just, I did kind of feel that way when we left our house, we were there for like five hours, but I just felt that. God doesn't want you to feel that way. Like we're all on a journey. Yes. And some people have gone way farther than others, but it was almost like, if you know what I'm trying to say. No. Yeah. And I'm so glad that you actually brought it. It's extremely relevant because it's something that um, is really heavy on um, me in terms of, you know, delivering even my testimony. It's the only reason I share it because I've struggled with sharing it for all these years uh, and how to, because I don't want to ponder on the past. Right. But what, but what the Lord has been showing me is to use it as an avenue to draw people into not having the same encounter I did. Cause my encounter was my encounter, right? Everyone's going to have their own encounter, their own experience, but to lead them into experiencing that themselves and knowing him in that way, because the reality is it's like, yeah, that was my moment and it changed my life, but he wants that with everyone. Mm -hmm. And think about how awesome he is that it's even possible. Yeah. Cause you know, like with our dads, like our earthly dads, right. They're like human and you know, they can only give one person attention at a time, like full attention. And they have a lot of kids, it's all divided. So in that context, it's kind of hard to relate, um, our heavenly father to our earthly father, but with God, no, like he can have a relationship with us all equally, all the same. And, um, it's, to me, it's exciting. Like you have your relationship with God and you're going to have your revelation. Um, and it doesn't make mine isn't any better than yours, but to me, what's so cool. It's like a, a diamond, like a prism mm -hmm. where you're having your relationship with the father and you're seeing something and he's showing you something because you're you and I'm having mine because I'm me. But when we bring it together, it allows us both we share it with each other it allows us both to get a better picture of that diamond of the prism and to know so your relationship with God should and when we share it with each other should actually allow me to draw into closer relationship with God because you are giving me something to build on so when you share something with me about what God has taught you, like, for example, let's use what you just shared. Like, oh, when we share our stories or our relationship with God, it's important for us to make sure that we're not making people feel less than or that they're not as good or as close to God as we are, right? So, wow, I never thought about that. That's so important to God. I do that. feel like what she shared was very relevant and in that she was almost saying exactly what you're saying in that we form beliefs in our mind, like that God did that to me because he was punishing me. 
because I made a bad choice. And I do feel it was almost exactly what you're sharing in the way she was saying it, but it was almost like she was saying, you're completely wrong. Cause I, I felt that God had told me to stay in a situation. And she was saying, you're saying, if God told you to stay in that situation, that it's because you did something, it's because he was punishing you. Uh -huh. So I, but I felt her deliverance wasn't in love. It was in like, I'm right. You're wrong. Yeah. And I just think it's important that we help people to understand, like you said, just being in community and, and saying, okay, well, may, and, and she really did make me think, you know, okay, mm -hmm. maybe I am wrong in my thoughts of that yeah. because we do form these belief systems that are not right. Yeah. That are not loving, that are not God. So. Yeah. And, and that's, so throughout the month, as I share, uh, you know, share what I've learned about God, it's exactly what you're saying. God's love is actually what began to tear down the strongholds of belief systems that I've had. And some of them were like really strong. And when they broke life altering, I'm talking about when there was one particular thing, which we're going to talk about late, you know, um, I don't know exactly right. when, but I haven't yet wrote about it because it's going to be a little uh, controversial, but uh, when that yeah. one broke, I, I cried at the yeah. realization that, oh my gosh, I have believed this my whole life yeah. and I've been wrong. But not only that, what else am I wrong about? Right. And it was that, that led me on this path of seeking God for who he really, really is mm -hmm. not what I've been taught. So I, I went through this whole journey of, I wouldn't say unlearning. Um, I used to say I went through a journey of unlearning, but that's, that's um, kind of a negative way to look at it. I just went on a journey discovering who God was and allowing the strongholds of bad thinking come down. And it impacted my relationship with God because there are certain thoughts that we have that we've been programmed to think that um, even if someone who's never been to church, there are certain thinkings that have come from the world, the concepts of the world, especially because of Greek mythology and philosophy that have penetrated the, the whole Western world and formulated thoughts, like even think like little subtle things we learn in school and it affects how we see God without even realizing that's what's happening. So throughout this month, um, it's my, my heart is to share what I've learned. Um, but to your point, Rachel, it's to give people something to think about and to stand on so that they can pursue. So when I'm giving, you know, the verse of the day, the song of the day, um, or the prayer of the day, the prayer is really, um, to me, prayer is a conversation right? It's, I'm talking to God, and then he talks to me. Um, but the prayer is really to give us something to focus on and to meditate on, so that we can open our hearts and realize, okay, so if I'm praying and asking God, God, open my eyes and open my ears that I may be able to perceive you. It's just a conversation that's opening up in the spirit realm, the ability for us to become more aware and something for us to focus on because if i can share with you my experience and my stories but if i don't offer something that can drive you into your own experience then i'm just talking at you and i'm right. you know and it's like i know and you don't and that's not what that's not my heart's intent my heart's intent is hey, this is what I found and I want everyone to have what God has given me and it's transformed my life. And I went from, you know, living in complete fear to even though none of my circumstances changed, living a life that overcomes fear and living a life of peace, even if everything like around me is going crazy, like with this whole COVID thing, you know, at, the whole world has changed and in some ways there's fear and panic and whatever your thoughts are on it and to be able to live 
with peace inside, no matter what, knowing that you're secure in the Father's hands is something that everyone wants, but not everyone has. So I want, I want everyone to have it. I want everyone to be like, hey, we need to take the precautions. We need to be careful, but I don't fear. I'm okay. It's, it's okay. And I have Jesus to offer everyone else, you know, as well. So it's really about drawing people. And I encourage everyone uh, throughout the month to, uh, you know, whether it's the verse of the day, the prayer of the day, the song, you know, the songs are, so I love worship. Um, I used to lead worship for years. So worship is near and dear to my heart. Um, so in sharing the song of the day, they're just songs that really spoke to me when I needed to and allowed me to discover an aspect of God and kind of soak in it. So I'm sharing the song of the day so that people can just turn it on, have a moment. Ideally, it's a moment where you can really just like sit there and listen and let the words of the song come into your soul and wash you um, because that's what it did for me. So just another route to communicate that. All right, so um, it's eight o'clock. So I'd like to close us off in prayer. Um, do you, uh, Lene or Rachel, do you guys have anything in closing? Um, I just wanted to let you know that I really appreciate how you are including everybody and you're focusing, helping us to focus on God right now, keep our eyes on God. Um, you know, the news is important, but I think just, trying to include everybody where they're at and the teaching that you're giving. I just, I want to say you're such a blessing. So thank, thank you. you for that. Yep. Thank you. I'm glad I could get up for this. I know. <laughs> I was like, I'm usually up early, but um, I've had a very um, exciting week to put it positive. So I'm a little tired, but um, I was like this, um, you know, waking up early is so critical for me so that I have like my peace of mind with the kids at home and stuff. It's like my only quiet time. So it's worth losing a little bit of sleep just so that I can have my, my moments with um, God. And so what I'd like to do is um, I'll close us off in prayer. And then um, Rachel, if you can follow up and um, pray as well, is it, would that be okay? Sure. Okay, so Father, we just thank you for your presence. We thank you because you are our Father. Not only did you create us and put your breath in us to bring us to life, but the difference between us and all of creation is that you formed us. You not only spoke us into existence, but you formed us, you molded us, you designed us, you made us in your image as your image. And I just thank you that we are your children, that that is what makes us your children. That is what sets us apart from the rest of creation. So I just pray, Holy Spirit, that everyone watching right now, everyone um, who's listening to this, if they have um, anything that's hindering them from truly seeing God as a good father, truly understanding his unconditional love and how much he loves us independent of our faults that you may reveal to them and unpack and unwrap the father's heart to them, that they may come to see that God is a good father, that he is one that wants good things, that he wants peace in our lives, that he desires that we live a life of abundance being led by love and filled with peace and with joy. I pray right now, Father, that during this time where so much, there's so much uncertainty, so many people out of work, not knowing what's going to happen one day from the next, that you may fill them with your peace and that they may come to trust in you simply because they know that you are a good father. So I thank you Father, for everything that you do. And I just pray that you release to us all how good of a father you truly are and that you are better than we think. In Jesus' name. Lord, I just thank you for this time together. I thank you that we could um, 
use the technology that you've given us to still communicate in this moment, Lord. I think that um, it's it's a wonderful time. And I just ask that you would share your love with us, Lord, that you would show us what you have for us today, Lord, that you would speak to us in a way that we've never been spoken to, Lord, that you would just minister to our hearts, that we would realize as your children that we are the church, that even if we're not in a building and we're not able to gather together, we can still be the church, Lord. We can still reach your children. We can still reach your people, Lord. I just ask that you would uh, use this time over this month, Lord, just to release your glory Lord, that you would release your, your power, that right now we realize that we battle not against flesh and blood, that there are things that, there are principalities, there are powers of darkness that we don't see, Lord, that our eyes would be opened to, to the unseen world, Lord, that we would understand that we are in a battle, that we have to put on the full armor of Christ if we're going to succeed in this, Lord. And I just ask that your mighty love would surround each and every one of us, that we would feel your peace that passes all understanding, and that we would know that we know that you are working all things together for our good, and that as we join together in prayer each morning, as we join together in worship, Lord, that your glory would fall, Lord, that we would feel the power of the Holy Spirit in our living rooms, and that that power would change the atmosphere, that that power would change circumstances, that we would see the principalities fall, that they would have no more power, Lord, that I, I just pray that your people would be mobilized in this time, Lord, that, that you would just raise up uh, an anointing that can't be stopped, that we would just be able to walk in glory and power and might, and that we would see the authority that you have given us is to take down these strongholds, that the enemy, the enemy is really powerless. And I just ask that your people would know who they are in this time, that we would stand up, that we would fight, that we would pick up our swords, that we would pick up our armor, that we would use your word and we would use uh, the power that you have given us to break the stronghold, Lord, and that we would know that we are sons and daughters of the most high God and that you walk with us, you go with us, you teach us and you want to help us grow, Lord. I thank you for all that you've done. I thank you for Andrea, Lord. And I just ask that you just continue to use your people for your glory in your precious mighty name. Amen. Amen. So uh, thank you, Rachel and Lene, for jumping on the Zoom. And I hope you guys have a blessed day. I know we all have our kids at home, so we have a full day ahead of us. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully um, starting off the day like this, we'll just, propel your day. And I just, you know, pray that as you guys are going throughout your day, just like everyone watching, that you may be able to perceive the father speaking to you in every single circumstance and every conversation, TV shows, conversations with your kids, cooking dinner, um, that you may just perceive how he's around you and speaking to you. Okay. Bye guys. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.